And so you see, this uh, tuning process is enhanced by opening our consciousness to wider perspectives instead of being encapsulated in our personal consciousness. You see, when um, musicians come together to improvise,
Это
ocean ring. And each person, of course, has his own rate of vibration, and that varies, of course, from one moment to the other, like that sometimes in the, you're vibrating at a very fast but peaceful rate, and other times when you're vibrating at a rate that may be a little, a little slower, yet rather chaotic. It doesn't, it's not regular enough. And of course, the cosmic vibrations are on the whole, very um, orderly, um, except there are some rebels like the comets, for example, don't conform to the overall harmony. And so there are beings also, and every being is to some extent a rebel. So it's a very wonderful thing that happens to you in the retreat, particularly if you get attuned and attuned and further attuned until you get to a point when you're absolutely in harmony with the cosmic order. And the mantra is a wonderful means of attuning yourself. It's a wonderful technique, let's say. But it's only effective if up your reactions of just simply imposing your sound that's no good just keep on saying your sound it, it must be your you have to adapt your sound to the vibrations around you and become very sensitive pick them up and and then it comes a time when you experience a kind of communion with the whole frequency range of uh, vibrations in the cosmos as I said yesterday, um, we are used to experiencing the universe as other than ourselves, forgetting, of course, that we're, we're so much part of it that we couldn't extract ourselves from it. That's one thing that scientists have discovered, that if you extract, for example, an atom from its environment, it isn't an atom anymore, so you... You can't observe um, uh, the nature of things um, in an absolute way. Everything is, that's the principle of Heisenberg. Uh, uh, principle, uh, um, it, of what they call indeterminism. You, um, there's the, the, there's also the influence of the observer. So you, at that level of, of, of experience, you are the sounds that you are hearing because of the sympathetic uh, uh, resonance that I'm talking about. So you, you are a body of vibration. So you, you, are, you, you don't hear vibrations, you vibrate. You, you, your body of vibration vibrates uh, at the rate of what you hear, you see. It's like it's beyond duality. You're not the, consci the consciousness is experiencing a phenomena, but you are that phenomena yourself. And it's because we're so used to the habit of thinking of ourselves as a consciousness and the universe as an object that we find it difficult to hear the symphony of the spheres. And that's why I ought to say you have to take the plunge into the ocean of vibration so that you kind of interfuse with it, you dissolve in it. In practice, it's like taking the plunge upwards instead of downwards, if you can understand what I mean. And um, there are secondary chakras to the uh, Vishuddha chakra, the, the throat center, which are in the temples instead of being in the ears. And 
perhaps you know that beautiful Greek statue of a, they call it winged thought. Uh, there's a wing uh, coming out of the temple of this uh, of a figure of a lady. Well, that's it, exactly as we have the wings uh, from our shoulder blades, uh, which are wings of light. Uh, there's also wings of um, vibration coming out of our temples. So that's how we can listen to the sound. It's a very, um, how can I say, it's very much in the tradition. Hearken, hearken to the reed. You know, that's a poem of Jalaluddin Rumi. And um, many of the surahs of the Quran start by kulhu, that means listen. Creation started as pure vibration. Listen to the origin of your being. Listen to the symphony of the spheres. You were born out of that symphony. I'd sometimes say, do you remember having been born as a light that was switched on or like a candle that was lit up? But it is also true, at a higher level still, you are born as a vibration. Because vibrations generate vibrations, they interfuse, and just like the bodies of people who create other bodies, vibrations in, by their interfusion create new vibrations. It's like a whole world of vibrations. And you can enter into that world. I gave you once the a theme of meditation which was like drops of rain dropping or dripping upon a lake but instead of it being water I mean drops of water it's drops of light and the lake is like a, you know it's a sort of all dark blue or very dark it's all in the darkness and and of course each drop creates a kind of eddy on the surface and not only on the surface but also that it goes into the depth and so you have all this sh shimmering um, pattern of uh, these patterns of uh, continually being formed now that was a vision that was inspired by uh, listening to um, Prelude and Fugue for Organ by Bach but um, um, one can experience the same thing transposed in terms of, of sound. Like, um, for example, if you could hear the crash of uh, lightning upon, on the hilltops or the, in the high mountains, and then you hear the reverberation, the echo of, of the sounds produced, on the other mountain tops, on, on the other peaks, and then how the, the sounds interfuse, then you'd have some kind of a, an idea of this whole world of vibrations that keep on echoing one another and, and even uh, and interfusing with one another and even triggering one another off. And you experience yourself as being part of it.